Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC guy. You know, back in uh, video 194, I showed you how to install a Digitrex uh, decoder in this Atherin ready to run SD40-2 locomotive. And I said I would do a follow-up video on how to upload new sound files into the decoder. And then we would go through the steps on how to uh, change the uh, volumes, uh, the master volume, the prime mover, the bell, the horn. So let's go ahead and go through those steps here uh, with this locomotive. So let's get started. Okay, before we get started, I want to ask you to take a second to subscribe. Click on the subscribe box, and when that comes up, click on the little bell right next to it, and click all. After my video on uh, installing a decoder in this locomotive, Several people ask me in the comments why I chose that decoder to go into this installation. Because, you know, it's not really the quality of a Loke Sound or a Soundtrax or a Wow Sound decoder. But you're only paying, you know, maybe 60 bucks for the, for the Digitrex decoder. Whereas you're going to be paying almost twice that for a Tsunami 2 or a, a Wow Sound decoder or a, a Loke Sound de decoder. So, it's a trade-off. You're making a trade-off as to what you're going to get for what you're willing to pay. So if you really want the highest quality sound that you can get, then go for one of the big three. If you're willing to, you know, go with something uh, that only has a limited number of sounds and functions available, then Digitrex is a reasonable option for a lot of people. Another reason that I chose that particular uh, decoder for this installation is that I wanted to maximize the ready-to-run options of this uh, particular model. So I wanted a decoder that I could plug in using either the 8-pin plug uh, that matches the socket on the board here, or a JST connector that is also on this board. So that limits the number of, of decoders right away. Another option that I was looking for was um, a minimal number, at least a minimal number of sounds that are going to be usable. Because to be honest with you, I know that there are a lot of high-end users who really love their WOW sound and their Loke sound and their soundtracks uh, decoders, and they love the sounds. But I know a lot of other people that are just out to run trains, and the sounds are part of it. Uh, you know, and part of the operating groups that I uh, participated in. Um, you know, very few people blow the horn, blow the, uh, ring the bell, or do any of that kind of stuff. They're just listening to the sounds as they roll along. So, it, for many, many people, it can be a waste of, of money to invest in decoders that cost a hundred bucks when they can get by with one that costs sixty bucks. So, those are the kinds of modelers that, you know, this is, is focused at. Now, for the rest of you who might want a higher quality sound, all you have to do is come up with a decoder that's going to match uh, the plugs, or the sockets anyway, on the board in this particular model. And then you can plug it in and install it, just like I showed you, because it, you know, it's easy enough to hook up uh, a decoder to um, a uh, sugar cube speaker. And you know, if you purchase a decoder that has um, an 8-pin plug on it, or a JST socket, you can go that route. You can uh, rip out the board that comes in this and put in your own plug-and-play. So, there's a number of different ways that you can go about doing this installation, but that's not what I was focusing on. I was focusing on maximizing the ready-to-run options of this particular model. And we'll see how that sounds, and we'll play around with um, changing the volume of the master volume, the prime mover, the bell and the horn. Okay, I've zoomed in here on the uh, benchtop, and I've got my SD40-2 set up here on a piece of track. And I've got two wires connected to the track coming from a Digitrex PR4. Now, the Digitrex PR4 is the uh, latest version of the independent uh, USB interface to go from your computer to the Digitrack system, but it can also be used as a standalone programmer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect this up 
to my computer and also provide power. So let me go ahead and power it up first. And it comes with a, uh, a small plug-in power supply. So I've got that. And I've got my USB uh, adapter cable here coming from the computer that I've plugged in already there. And I'm going to just plug it in right here in the back. And you see it immediately lights up. We've got all the protocols established. Uh, I will tell you it was very easy to uh, set this up. I just literally plugged it into my Windows 10 computer and it automatically installed everything and told me what uh, COM port it was on. So it was ready to go and almost instantaneously. I'm going to start over here on the computer and crank it up because you do have to use the, uh, the uh, Digitrex software, the sound loader software, and uh, that's free to be downloaded from their, uh, their website. You just go there to their downloads and look for, their, um, for that uh, sound loader package, and you can install that on your Windows computer and hook it up through your PR4. So let me go ahead and I'm going to start that up, and then we'll go through the load process, and I'll record that also on the, uh, on the Windows computer so that we can see what's going on. I'm going to start the download or upload process, and uh, I'm going to hold my uh, microphone over near it because you're going to hear this loud piercing sound when it starts to erase the flash memory. The sound stops when it gets to about, oh, 70% or so, and then it starts downloading the files into the, into the um, decoder itself. So I'm going to let that run and just shut the, uh, shut the camera off because it's sort of like watching grass grow. Okay, so here, this is the sound loader uh, program. Like I said, you can download this from the Digitrex website and install it on your computer. It is only available for Windows computers. And one thing I wanted to, to point out, as far as the files, um, you can open a sound project file, you can create a new sound project, save, all of that kind of thing. So where do you get sound project files? Well, uh, I've mentioned the, uh, the Digitrex uh, website. They have their Sound Depot where you can download uh, sound project files that they've created and that other people have created and uh, they've uploaded to the website. Now, another source is a fellow named John McMasters, and he is one of the people that has done a number of the uh, sound projects on the Digitrax website. But John also continues to develop a lot of new ones all the time. And uh, if you go to the website groups.io and look there for his uh, group, which is called A, N as in Nancy, P-R-R. -R. So it's A-N-P-R-R. -R. And if you join that group, there's a files section where you can go and look at all of the different uh, files, uh, sound projects that he has created, and you can download them for free. Plus that group, they do a lot of discussions on how to create your own sound files, and, you know, they swap uh, uh, recordings and clips and all kinds of things. So, you know, it's, it's sort of like a hobby within a hobby. So you can give that a try. So those are the primary places where you would get sound projects to upload uh, into the uh, decoders. Um, okay, first thing you want to do here is open the correct file. So I'm going to open a file and open a sound project. And we're going to go with the SD40-2 here. And it's going to open that. Okay, let's click on Get Detailed Information. So you can see now it's reading the decoder information. So we just have to sit and wait for it to finish, getting all 10 of those items. Okay, so right here is what it read. It's a Digitrex SFX sound decoder. 16-bit um, series 6, software version 8, flash size, a free flash, 
and various other little items here that you don't really need. Okay, so now all you have to do is press this button to download the entire sound project to the decoder. So you do it. And that's when that nasty sound starts. And this is how you know it's working. In addition, it's got this good little uh, uh, readout here that shows you the progress. Plus, you get to listen to that high-pitched whine. Fortunately, it stops after about 75%. And now it starts downloading the data. And while that's happening, I'll point out up here, these are all of the different um, sound snippets or clips that make up the file. So you've got a diesel start bell, a diesel start, the diesel idle, idle run, diesel run, diesel run high etc. All of these different sounds are part of the project and they can individually be turned on and off and then you can make modifications uh, internally uh, to the uh, sound project itself. Okay, we're getting close to the end there. We are done. Okay, now different things up here you can uh, uh, take a look at the view which is pretty straightforward. COM port, so you can select whichever COM port, and this is COM port 8, so I'm going to leave that alone and hit cancel. Now you'll notice that it says PR3 connected and ready. It still uses the PR3 interface protocols, uh, even though this is a PR4 device, and it's, it's, it, it, they did not need to change the driver for it. It, it works with that driver, so that is correct. Let's see what else. Let's take a look at this sound test up here at the top. Now I'm going to open that up and you'll see right off, one thing it's doing is it's reading in a lot of CV data. And the locomotive has started up behind me here. Um, unfortunately, you can't hear it too well because it's behind my laptop. But at any rate, if you look here, you've got all of these different functions. So I can play the bell. I can hit the horn. And various other sounds all throughout here. And one thing you can do is if you look down here, it's got a customized box. So you can look and it has master volume, you know, all kinds of other volumes. Um, various rate functions, all of these things. And all you have to do, let's see the master volume here. Master volume is controlled by CV58. And you can see it can have a range of 0 to 15 with a default of 9. So if we enter a value of 15 in here and hit write CV, then that's going to change that CV setting in the decoder. So you can do all of your programming right here and then you can go back and do a sound test and see if it's loud enough. And you can do that with the F2 for the horn. I can uh, increase the prime mover. So I can test that. And my loco came to the end of the track there. Uh, so it's a real nice little feature. Now, with that said, so you can do all of your programming right here. I do. A, I like to do my programming on the track because it gives me more room to test, you know, the uh, the locomotive sounds as the locomotive is actually moving, and the response uh, is a lot faster when you're using a handheld throttle to make the changes and then test the sounds. Because with some of these, it can take a, a second in order for the, uh, uh, for the command to be sent to the locomotive. Although that was pretty quick. And there's the, the bell again. 
and you can just run through all of the different functions and test those. And uh, by the way, you don't have to, uh, uh, it doesn't have to be available in this drop down box in order to modify it. You can enter any value here and then change the, uh, the uh, data, the value that you want to enter and then hit write and it will write to that CV. But you know, you can also, once you once I've finished playing with this, let me go ahead and close that. And then we can go to the CV editor because with the CV editor, you can read the value of any CV in the decoder. So you just check it and then hit recheck and it's going to read it, operation complete. And you'll see that it is read that CV3 is set to a value of three. So then you could change that to say five and then do a write. And it's going to write that new value to the decoder. So you can do just about everything you need to do as far as programming it using either the sound test or the CV editor. Uh, but as I'm going to show you, uh, I use the, uh, I, I, I tend to use ops mode programming uh, to do most of my modifications on the layout. And then I run the locomotive and I, I, I prefer doing it that way. But this is a very quick way to make uh, some, some changes if you know exactly what you want to do. And then you can put the locomotive on the track and do some tweaking using ops mode programming. Now, some other things that you can do manually if you want. Um, you can manually erase the flash, do various other things, program waves, program the uh, sound file. So this is something you'll need to read uh, upon in order to use. Because normally when you're downloading the, the, uh, the project, it will automatically erase the flash and do everything for you. So I, I have never had to use any of these functions here on this side. Okay, so uh, let's get back over there and see how the uh, locomotive sounds. Okay, so I've got the locomotive over here on the track and it's uh, doing its thing, idling away. So I'm gonna go ahead, I need to switch my microphones. So let me go ahead and do that and then I'll be back and we'll go ahead and try some different uh, settings. So right off, I'm going to say that the bell probably needs to go a little bit faster and the, um, and the volume on the bell could come up a little bit. So first off, I think I'm going to go ahead and increase the bell volume. And that involves uh, using CV141. Okay, so I'm going to get into ops mode with this locomotive, go into programming, and I'm going to increase CV141 to a value, oh, let's go up to about 50. Hit enter. Tell you what, I'm going to drop that ring rate down to about 5, and I'm going to drop it to 5. We'll hit enter, and let's see what that's like now. Well, 
Well, I kind of like that, um, like that volume of the bell because I don't like a loud bell. But that's not bad, and I like the, uh, I like the increased rate a little bit better. I might even speed it up later. Let's go ahead. I think I'm pretty happy with the volume on the horn. Let's go to 140, and we'll increase the prime mover volume up to uh, a higher level. Okay, I'm going to increase that volume on the prime mover to 64, which is the maximum volume. Okay, let's go ahead and see how that sounds. Well, that's a wrap for today's video. You know, I hope you'll give some uh, consideration to how you want to go about uh, using the ready-to-run options in these uh, Athern locomotives. You can install your own decoder and choose which uh, sound uh, system, which brand that you want to use. So in the meantime, have a great weekend, and we'll see you here on Monday or Tuesday, I guess. Since it's a holiday weekend, I'm not sure. But we'll see you next week with another video from the DCC Guide. Bye now.